Now I'll read today's passage. Today's passage is from the New Testament, the book of Luke 12, verses 35 through 48. Once again, Luke 12, verses 35 through 48. Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord answered, Who then is the faithful and wise manager, whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at a proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will, be put, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, My master is taking a long time in coming, and he then begins to beat the other servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of the servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. The servant who knows the master's will and, and does, not get, uh, does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be mated with many blows, but the one who does not know and does not think uh, things deserving punishment will be many few blows. From everyone who has been given much, will much will be demanded. And from one who has not been trusted with much, much more will be asked. Dear Heavenly Father, and thank you so much for this opportunity to worship and to sing praises to you. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful uh, time to worship you this morning. And we thank you that you are using this church to further your kingdom here. We thank you for all of the different pastors and uh, missionaries here. Lord, please watch over Pastor Anjiki as he gives his message this morning. We have great expectations of what you will do, praying in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Thank you for coming amidst the rain. <laughs> We're, I'm very happy to be able to worship with you this morning. Today we'll be going over the passage that was just read, and today's sermon title is As a Servant Waiting for His Master to Return. There was once a gentleman who was staying at a hotel, and he was about to check out. He got into his uh, taxi and was uh, going to go to the airport, but then he remembered that he had forgotten something in his hotel room. So he had the bellboy come and gave him a tip and said to him, can you go check my room because I think I forgot something there. Can you go look and see if I forgot something? So the bellboy went and then he came back and he said to the gentleman, uh, yes, uh, there was uh, your hat and glasses in your room. And the gentleman said, oh, thank you. And he put his hand out. However, the bellboy didn't bring the items to the man. He said, why didn't you bring this stuff to me? And the um, bellboy said, well, you just asked me to look and see if there was anything you had forgotten. You didn't say, tell me to bring it. 
if this bell boy, this type of bell boy, was、uh, somebody you asked to do、uh, something, you would say, "Oh man, I can't use you. You're so stupid. You don't understand what you're supposed to be doing." Yeah, <laughs> that's. You would, even if you didn't say that, you would probably feel that in your heart anyway. In today's passage, we can learn、uh, from Jesus what, what a person is who cannot be used、uh, for his purposes. And we can also learn from this how we can be used for His purposes. Let's learn together. In the first part of Luke,、uh, first part of Luke chapter twelve,、uh, there is a lot of people gathering around Jesus, and、uh, Jesus, before talking to them, first、uh, talked to His disciples. That's the very first part in Luke twelve. For example, it says,、uh, "You shall not fear. You shall not be worried." Says uh, uh, to treat others nicely as well, <laughs> and it says、uh, to wait first for the kingdom of God, and also to、um, store up your treasures in heaven. In today's passage, it's、uh, talking about opening your eyes and keeping your eye,、uh, keeping yourself awake, and to be prepared. In today's passage, Jesus is、uh, talking to us through various parables, and telling us how we should be living in、uh, anticipation of His kingdom. Let's look at verse thirty-five.、It、says, "Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning." At that time, the Jewish people had something that wasn't quite as fancy as a Japanese kimono, but it was kind of a long a frock or a dress of some sort. When they were in their house, just relaxing,、uh, they would、um, kind of relax and have their um, uh, um, in a, a clothing not in a fancy state. But when they would go out, they would make sure that they had their belt tightened and had everything ready to go. So that was why、uh, they would have to get prepared to go out. Here, Jesus is telling his disciples that. In order to be somebody who can be used for、uh, God's purposes, that they need to be ready at all times. They need to have their heart in a ready and prepared position. When he was explaining this in verse, verses thirty-six and thirty-seven, he said he、uh, gives examples of parables. At that time in Israel. They had、uh, wedding reception parties, and it's kind of something like、uh, what would be the Japanese version of a wedding and reception party combined, and it would last for actually about a week. So anyone who was invited to this、um, party would be waiting.、Um, that would be know that it would last a week. So they would, because they wouldn't likely be able to go for the whole week, they would、uh, just go when they were able to and go home when they had to leave. So anyway, this parable is talking about a man、uh, going, but、um, they didn't, and so these、um, servants of his didn't know when the, their、uh, master would be coming back. But the master told the servants, "You need to be、uh, have your eyes open and be ready." That's how the master instructed the servants to be. In verse thirty-seven, it says, "It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes." When it means to have your eyes open, in Greek, actually is the word Gregorio, or in Latin, uh, uh, sorry, Latin is Gregory, in in、uh, English, Gregory. Long ago, in the Christian、uh, society, many people、uh, used、uh, or gave the name of Gregorio or Gregory to their children, because they. Wanted to be sure that they were、uh, ready and had their eyes open, prepared for Jesus' second coming. So that's why they、uh, chose these names. In Japan, it would be like a name of like alarm clock boy or something. <laughs> anyway, just、uh, indicating that they would be ready for Jesus' second coming at any time. However, in the second half of verse thirty-seven. It's talking about something that's kind of surprising. It says, "Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at a table, and will have will come and wait on them." So this master who comes back would come to the servants and take care of them. That at this time in that society, this was something that would never happen. 
At that time, the master would sit down and the servants would serve him. However, and Jesus is talking about something of the opposite. He's saying that the master would come back and the, he, the master serving the servant. So this is actually Jesus referring to himself in the Last Supper when he would be washing the feet of his disciples. At that time, to wash someone's shirt, uh, feet is something that only a servant would do. So when you went to a party, uh, the servants would be in charge of washing uh, the guests' feet before they came into the um, house or the room. However, at the Last sur uh, Supper, Jesus was the one who actually washed the feet of his servants. And disciples. These disciples uh, were ones that had followed Jesus for three and a half years. At first, many people uh, followed Jesus, but uh, the number decreased over time. However, at the last supper, the, G the disciples that remained were the ones um, that had followed him to the end. So Jesus uh, was kind of almost in a way expressing his uh, thankfulness to them uh, for following him and uh, expressing his um, recognition of them being a uh, faithful uh, to the end. So he uh, washed each of their feet. And, and, and so in this way, he was expressing his uh, gratitude to them. In the same way, when we uh, finish our lives here and go back to uh, heaven, we I, I believe that uh, Jesus will be washing our feet in a sense when we get there. He will, use, he will recognize our hands and feet that we have used for his purposes here and um, greet us in that way when we go to heaven. He will uh, clean us up when we arrive. In the book of Matthew, of chapter 5, 11, verses 11 through 12, Jesus says the following, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because you're great in, in, is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So in heaven, uh, they will be uh, greatly rewarded. Any time that we ha experience any inconvenience or pain for the purposes of God, uh, we will be rewarded for that when we get to heaven. Many people have to pay a great sacrifice for uh, following the Lord here on this earth, but when they go to heaven, they will be greatly rewarded for doing so. So it's a very encouraging passage. That's why we can really uh, not have to be afraid of serving the Lord because we know that a reward is awaiting us. In the first and second centuries, uh, the church, the Christian society faced a lot of um, persecution, especially in uh, the Roman Empire. There was a massive persecution. At that time, Peter and Paul uh, were uh, said to be uh, martyred. A little bit after that time, there was a person by the Roman emperor named of Domitianus, and during his reign, the um, persecution kind of reached its max, and many people were uh, martyred. Many people who were murdered at that time were uh, killed by uh, lions and so on, and you can see pictures and paintings of that uh, still today. So this was kind of the peak of the persecution at that time. He reigned from 81 to 96, which is a period of about 15 years. This was the time when there was massive, massive persecution of the church, and many people were killed because of that. When he died, though, um, all the persecution came to a halt. During the persecution, many people um, had to worship in small groups in hidden places and did their best to do so. But as soon as uh, he, Domitianus died, then these people, these Christians, were able to worship publicly. And at that time, Christians would gather, and all of them had experienced the persecution period and they had all been uh, injured spiritually or physically in some way. So they all had that in common. 
in that time of massive persecution, there weren't, wasn't anybody who didn't have any um, scars, in a sense, from it. They weren't willing to compromise their faith. And so because of that, they were all uh, injured in some way. It's impossible to worship God, in a sense, without um, being uh, hurt in some way in this world. So even in these harsh circumstances, these people were able to pull through and they uh, will be rewarded for what they uh, had to experience here in heaven. In verse 39, another parable takes place. It says, but understand, uh, and it's talking about um, a master and a robber. It's possible that some of you may have been robbed uh, in the past. And did, in that case, did the robber tell you in advance, um, I'm coming, like, I'm coming at 2 a.m., I'll be there, um, please prepare. You know, <laughs> does any robbers uh, do that to you? I don't think so. <laughs> Most people think, oh, there'll never be a robber in my house. What here Jesus is talking about is this, his second coming. He's, uh, the Bible tells that uh, Jesus will come a second time here to this earth. And at that time, he wants us to be awake and not uh, sleeping. He wants us to be an awake and alert servant. Jesus' second coming is said to take place at a time that is unknown. It's mentioned a couple times in the Bible. For example, in um, First Thessalonians 5.2, it says, For you know very well the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. In uh, Re Revelations 3.3, 3, not verse 3, five, which is on your paper, but 3.3, 3, it says, If you uh, are, do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know what time I will come to you. So at a time when you're least expecting it is when Jesus is likely to come. What it means in verse 40, to be ready, is actually a direct translation, uh, meaning to be a person who is prepared. What this really means is, for example, you know the 100-meter relay? There's a starter who um, is holding a pistol to start it off, and he says, on your mark, get ready, go. And then the race starts, right? So when he says, on your mark, get ready, so when you hear the words, get ready, how does your heart feel? You just you have to be ready to go as soon as the gun goes off, right? That's what this uh, phrase is implying, so that when Jesus comes, you will just be ready to go. That's how Jesus wants us to be. He wants us to have our hearts in a way that we are just ready for him. When Jesus comes back, we want to be ready to welcome him. That's the kind of servants we want to be. In Jesus' parables, it's talking about, uh, oh, sorry, the disciples were listening to him. And uh, amongst them was the disciple named Peter. And just as always, he always had to say something. Let's look at verse 41. Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? So he just like always has to say something, doesn't he? <laughs> but Jesus doesn't uh, directly answer him. Instead, he gives another parable. And it's talking about the wise and uh, faithful manager. In verse 42, uh, there's the person who's referred to as a manager, and he's referred to as being a wise and uh, faithful. A manager is a person who is responsible for uh, looking over uh, servants. I'm oh, sorry. It's impossible for a manager to watch over all of his uh, servants, so he chooses one uh, servant and has them be a leader. He tells this uh, servant he has chosen to kind of watch over uh, all the others. He gives him that responsibility, and then thus he doesn't have to be responsible. So this one servant is responsible for looking over uh, many others. That's what uh, this word manager means. So, of course, the servant uh, who is in charge is still a servant, but he has uh, this responsibility, and he has the respect and uh, responsibility to the manager. So the servant is supposed to be uh, wise and uh, faithful. That is why he's chosen. In the Old Testament, it's talking about Jacob's son. Uh, his name was Joseph. 
His older brothers、uh, didn't like him, and he was taken to、uh, Egypt. He was sold there as a slave. When he was sold there, he was、uh, taken up by、uh, Potiphar as a slave, and Potiphar、uh, wanted to have him watch over his、uh, other slaves. So he ga- he realized that、uh, Joseph had、uh, amazing capabilities, and gave him、uh, the responsibility of watching over these other slaves. Therefore, Joseph was responsible for pretty much looking over everything of this man's house. And the reason why this happened, it, the Bible explains, is saying that because God was with him, and that God was the one who made、uh, him so successful. In the same way, from Jesus, we have been、uh, determined as being a wise and faithful, and we have been、uh, set as being、uh, like a manager or the head、uh, servants to watch over other things. We are to use our wisdom and our capabilities and our time and our finances、uh, for His purposes. God has given us that responsibility. Looking at verse thirty-seven, it's talking about the master who comes back and having their eyes open. But in verse forty-two, it's talking about how when the master comes back, this manager, it, oh, sorry, the master will check、uh, and see if the manager has been、uh, doing work as he was supposed to. If the manager kind of goofed off and didn't、uh, fulfill his responsibilities, then、uh, the master would just、uh, demote him or fire him. The manager would have to be responsible for all that was、um, allotted to him. Anything that、uh, we are given to,、uh, to by from God, we too are to be responsible for, so that when、uh, Jesus' second coming occurs,、uh, we can stand before Him. In any case, this parable's、uh, main point is that we are. To be, in order to be used truly by Jesus, we are to be wise and、uh, faithful managers of all that we have been given. <coughs> so, regardless of what circumstances we are facing, we are to be using all that we have wisely and faithfully for our Lord. That in itself is actually what will help us. Looking in Matthew sixteen twenty seven, it says. For the Son of Man, which is Jesus Christ, is going to come in His Father's glory with His angels, and this is referring to His second coming. And then He will reward each person according to what they have done. So we、um, believe in Jesus, and that means that we have been forgiven, and that we can go to、uh, heaven, which is just grace, and this is given freely,、uh, equally to all believers. The Bible uh, clearly uh, says that this、um, that、uh, clearly says that our reward though will be different, and it also says that whatever we do for the Lord, even if it's not recognized by others, God will recognize it, and He will reward us when we go to heaven. I've heard、uh, the following story. I heard that once there was a very poor、uh, architect、uh, once, and his、uh, house was totally falling apart because he didn't have the money to fix it. So, like when it rained, it would just get wet inside, and when、uh, the wind blew, it would like almost fall over. And someone watching him was actually a very、uh, exp- a very well-off man. So one time, this well-off man called the architect, and he said to the architect, "I'd like you to build a house for me, and、uh, you can spend as much money on it as you want. Use just the best materials, and you can build it. And、uh, you can have the best、um, workers come to actually physically build it." And he just gave him、uh, all this opportunity and money. The architect, you know, should have been all thrilled to have this wonderful opportunity. But unfortunately, his heart was poor, and what he thought of, unfortunately, was that he could use the best、um, materials, but he chose to use like second or third class materials and kept extra money for himself. He could have、uh, employed, a, you know, high quality, high caliber、um, workers, but instead he just 
uh, hired second class ones and saved the extra money for himself. And he um, just took back um, some other things when he was um, building it. And when the master returned and looked at the house, he was like, wow, this is an amazing house because uh, outwardly it looked amazing. And he said to the architect, I have made, I've actually built this house for you. It's a present for you. And he gave him, he gave the architect the key. And so what do you think the architect thought? He was so uh, up, ups, upset. He, if he had known that he was building the house for himself, there's no way he would have slacked off. In the same way, anything that we do here on earth will all come back to us. Nothing will be wasted. And Paul, I'm oh, sorry, Paul says in First Corinthians uh, 15, 58, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your, Lord, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So we are to be wise and faithful servants of Jesus and to express uh, his love to others. And in doing so, God will remember all that we have done and that we will be rewarded when we get to heaven. Nothing will be wasted. Even if people don't recognize what we're doing and nobody's watching, God sees it. And he will totally um, uh, reward us for what we have done. So we are to be wise and faithful uh, managers and servants of the Lord. Nothing will be a waste that we do for him. Now let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're not sure why, Lord, but you have decided to select us. You have forgiven us and given us uh, eternal life. You have given us the hope for heaven, and we thank you so much for this. Dear Lord, we know that as we're waiting for the bus to heaven, in a sense, um, we aren't to just sit here waiting around, but instead we are to be wise and faithful and use to the full extent what you have uh, so graciously given us for your purposes. Lord, allow us to truly be wise and faithful with all we have. We know that that's what you desire of us. Lord, we know that all that we do will be uh, remembered by you and that it will be rewarded when we do go to heaven. We know that we will be evaluated and uh, uh, judged and uh, rewarded for what we have done. Lord, allow us to be joyful and to do all we can for your purposes. Please give us the necessary wisdom and power to do so. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's have a time of prayer in silence. And I'll pray once more. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.